as, uh, as they're taking up our offering, I will tell you it is an honor today to um, be a part of the Alexis Shepherd's baptism. And we're looking forward to that. We'll, we're going to have her baptism as a response to the message that I'm sharing today. And I'm, as you heard, I'm continuing my uh, series on what and why. And if you uh, haven't dialed in with us before on this series or here today, first time, we are just taking some time to talk about what we do in the church and why do we do that. Because I think so often we come and we may experience worship services, but we may not fully understand what are we actually doing when that's happening and why are we really doing that? I do it because of others around me, that's what I've always known, but like why though? Our faith should happen knowing the why, right? We're gonna live it out knowing why we do what we do. So therefore we're able to share a reason for the hope that we have, that it's, it's really anchored in Christ and the scriptures. And so we can share that with the world and encourage each other in our faith. And so today we have reached, anybody can remember my guess? Baptism. I know it. What and why? What and why? Why do we, why do we, what is baptism? Why do we practice baptism? And uh, we're going to get there. I remember when I was at my first church and we had a uh, baptism. This was in Michigan, so the lower part of Michigan. And we had a gentleman there who wanted to be baptized. And so in Michigan, come about um, the end of October, you can pretty much bank on you're going to get some snow at some point right around there. So you may have snow on the ground for Halloween, um, but it's coming, right? Which typically means if it's snowing, then the temperature is cold, right? It's getting colder. And so uh, he was determined in the month of November that he wanted to be baptized. And we had a lake in the town that we lived in. He wanted to be baptized in that lake. And so I was like, I'm all for it. Let's do it, man. And we, we're walking out to, that, to the lake. And I had a gentleman helping me baptize uh, this, this gentleman that was in my, in my church. And and uh, they were already kind of walked out there to the spot. And I was talking to the congregation that gathered, you know, we're all out there. And, and I start walking. It's a, it's a pretty shallow lake. So you have to go a ways to get deep enough to actually baptize somebody. So it's in November. It's in Michigan. Walking out into a lake. And I still remember to this day, I'm walking out. And I have to keep going. As I'm going and I'm going to get out there, I just started feeling the muscles in my legs start to lock up. And I'm just like, this is really cold. <laughs> But we're going to do this. And uh, thankfully, I did not have to go under the water with this man. It was all in him. And he was totally on board. He was so excited about it. He loved it. He's like, yes. And I remember another time I had baptized um, a student. And I remember right before it happened, of course, the, fa you know, the family's all there. And there was some family for Alexis. And the family was there. And I remember the dad pulled me aside real quick in this little quiet moment. And he was just kind of like, Hey, do you mind maybe just hold him under for a little bit longer just to make sure this thing takes and he's good and clean when he comes back up? <laughs> and I'm going, I don't think that's how it works, but I'll see. <laughs> I've, I've baptized students. I've baptized adults in lakes and in pools, uh, I, inside churches. And, you know, it's been all over the place. And I've loved them all. And I love today. This is such a, one of the highlights of my um, of my vocation, my ministry is to baptize. And so um, I'm glad to be here. So with that being said, I think laughter is usually a good way to get us off and running. So uh, what is baptism? What is this thing that we call baptism that we practice that you're going to see here uh, today? And so let me just offer a thought that baptism is a personal uh, faith-based uh, testimony of having been cleansed from sin and dying to sin along with being spiritually reborn through one's faith in Jesus Christ, life, death, and resurrection. And where do we see that sense statement? I put a real quick like whoop to the point, right? Testimony of cleansing, dying, and rebirth in Christ. And so where might we see that in a baptism? And and for some, if this may be probably as helpful uh, as anything that um, I will say today. But I got more to say, so Scott, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll keep going, right? I'm just kidding. Um, so follow me over here, if you will. Let me go over here today. I always hate it because I'm not, not going to be standing in the light. Well, I'll stand right here in the light. Um, 
Walk in the light as he is in the light, Scripture says. Uh, so here, um, to your left, we have the baptistry over here. and We already have it filled with freezing cold ice water. Just, just kidding. It's, it's lukewarm for, uh, for Alexis. But here we have water, and, and there's three things I want to point out. One is the fact that there is water in here and that there's a need for water for baptism because water, um, water is, a, is a symbol of cleansing. So the fact that we enter into water, we're entering into this symbolic um, substance, if you will, that represents cleansing. So in the Old Testament, um, if there were people who were coming to practice, you know what, I want to, be, I want to practice the Jewish faith. I want to believe in Yahweh. I want to be, you know, we would say I want to become a Jew. And then there was the need for them to be cleansed. You know, because you're stepping into this holy faith. And so there was this, they would practice baptizing. And so it's full of washing them, you know, sort of symbolically clean. There were um, the priests who ministered in the temple. They would wash their hands regularly as they were serving. You imagine uh, those working with making animal sacrifices and the dirt and the dust and the debris, especially for the tent of meeting, right, which is out, it's outdoors, right? And so you got all the elements of nature. And, and even when they're inside the temple, uh, it's built. But there's, they wash their hands. Why? Because water was used as a symbol for cleansing, to be clean. In the New, in the New Testament, um, John is baptizing people in what? In water. Anybody remember where he was baptizing when Jesus came to him? In the Jordan River. That's right. So when you, when you baptize people, you need water to be present. But we also do something in that water. What, what do we do with the person who's in that body of water? They go down, put them down in the water, we bring it back up, right? So we immerse them down the water and we bring them back up. And so that immerse, that we call that immersion, right? So you're just going to feel today like, I feel like I'm in a catechism class. I'm having flashbacks. And yeah, okay, but it's all good because we need to know what we do and why we do it. So this is important for us to talk about and to be reminded of or maybe learn it for the first time. So when, uh, so for example, when Alexis goes underwater, that is symbolic of her, her death in Christ. Christ has already died for her sins and she is accepting that death and she is dying spiritually, sort of, well, spiritually, but through her salvation, she has died in Christ, but she's symbolizing, I'm accepting that death in Christ. I have died in Christ. My, I'm choosing as I live, live forward to live a life that not only accepts Christ's death for me, but I personally choose to die to sin. I don't want to live a life of sin that would uh, rebel against God. I want to live a life that honors God. Well, we can't leave you under the water, can we? So we got to what? We got to bring you back up. Y'all let me know if it needs to be a little longer, shorter. Just let me know, okay? That'd be great. And so as she's coming up out of the water, we have that uh, symbolic gesture of being spiritually reborn through Christ. So it's a personal faith-based testimony of having been washed, cleansed from sin and dying to sin, along with being spiritually reborn through faith in Christ's life, death, and resurrection, who did all that for the salvation of the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So when you're baptized today, Alexis, you're saying, this is my faith. This is what I believe. And church, I want you to know, this is what I believe like you. And we are together. And I'll go a little bit more in that as I'm kind of breaking, breaking this out and talk about why we do this thing we call baptism. Why make that declaration of faith? So I thought, oh, mercy, I'm going to put them to sleep if I'm not careful today. So uh, not because it's boring. But because it's teaching. Why do we do this? And so I thought, and I don't know, it hit me. You ever have those moments when you're thinking about something and it just kind of hits you? This is how I ought to do it. I kind of had this brain awakening uh, moment. And I was like, hey, I want to use John 14, 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. 
that kind of popped in my head. I'm like, ooh, I can use that. And so I want to I use that this morning with you. And to answer this question, why do we practice baptism in the Christian church? And I want to start with saying, so that we might walk in the way, i.e. the steps of Christ. If you opened your Bible right now, or you went in your Bible app or whatever, and you went to Mark chapter 1, you would, at verse 9 through 11, you would find the story of Jesus being baptized by John the Baptist in the Jordan River. And he does this not because he's sinful. He's the perfect son of God. He's sinless. But he, he does it in order to associate himself with the humanity that he's coming to save. And he shows himself as, as, a, as a person in the flesh there. Also God at the same time. But as, as someone who pleases God. Who is approved by God. And then he's going to go. And now the Holy Spirit is going to descend upon him. But as he lives his life from his had before, but even from that, uh, especially from that point forward, uh, he's, he lives a lifestyle that reinforces what his baptism was saying. That this is the holy life that brings honor to God. That the sin of the world does not bring honor to God. That a holy life that is lived and surrender and honor to God. This is the life that pleases the Lord. And on the other hand, we could look at it and say, well, I mean, if you want to get just honest about it, you know, Jesus said, hey, go baptize people, right? I mean, he said, go baptize people. The Great Commission, go make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? So, I mean, you might say, well, why do we do this? Because uh, Jesus said so. What other reason do you need? Well, I agree. Jesus has set a, a precedent for it, and so we follow, and the disciples have followed. And when a person is being baptized, they are associating themselves with Christ and who is holy and with his churches as well. In fact, 1 John 2, 6 says, uh, the one who claims to remain in him, uh, talking about Jesus, ought to live in the same way as he lived. So baptism is choosing to walk in the way of Christ. It's saying, this is the way. I, never, I didn't think I would ever get to put baptism and the Mandalorian in the same sentence together, but it just happened. Aren't you lucky? Or, or unfortunate. I guess it's been how you want to look at it. <laughs> Alexa is going to be walking in the way of Christ when she's baptized today. Uh, but it does more than that, though, because baptism, it also is a, a moment when, as an act of worship, we profess the truth of Christ. How many of you have ever heard of the Apostles' Creed or the Nicene Creed before? It says, we believe or I believe, I don't know which one you're stating. Um, but as Christians, we believe that Jesus was God in the flesh, that he was born of the Virgin Mary. He lived, crucified, died, and was buried. And on the third day, he was resurrected from the dead to take away the sins of the world. When we're baptized, we're proclaiming, we believe that Jesus is who he said he is. And he did what he said he did for all, for all. Who would believe that this is the truth? We also believe that Jesus promised eternal life to all who confess their belief in his life, death, and resurrection. So why do we practice baptism? Because it professes our belief in the truth of Christ. If we will die in Christ, we get to be reborn in Christ. We get to spend eternal life in the kingdom of God, eternal life in heaven. You mean I gotta be baptized to get to that? That's not what I'm saying. Baptism is a sign of the faith that I have in Christ and who he is and what he's done and what he will do. I'm professing the truth of Christ that I personally believe in. 
2 Corinthians 5.17, the Apostle Paul said it this way. He said, if, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. He says, the old is gone. The new is here. And even Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. You know, you see, that's the good news. That, that really is pointing to Jesus. And Paul said it wonderfully again. He said, for it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. And this not from yourselves. It is a gift of God. So that, not by works, so that no one can boast about it. Nobody can say, I'm a baptized day because I'm pretty good. No, it has nothing to do with you. But it has everything to do with God. And I want to proclaim that truth that it's, it's about God. It's about Jesus. It's about the salvation he gave me. It's, it's the rebirth that he has done for me, in me. It's the consequence of his justifying grace, his sanctifying grace in me, not, not my works or merit. It's been accomplished not because of something that I did or that I was good enough, but because of Christ, his sufficiency, not mine. It's because God has brought us into his family, into his church. It's, he's the one who's made us brothers and sisters in Christ through salvation. Not because I just wanted to be a, a part of it. No, he, it's not by us. It's because of God. That's the truth. Alexis, the greatest life that you could ever live will not be because of you. It will be because of Christ in you. It will not be because of your own strength. It will be because of the strength of God that is in you and upon you and working through your life. It will not be because of your own smarts and you're smart. It will be because of the wisdom of God that is within you. You are great because of God. Always hold on to that. You are great because God is great in you. And that's what makes you great. So when we baptize, what, do you remember if you ever had a baptism, when writers are getting ready to put the person, uh, immerse them in the water, we say, I baptize you in the what? Name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And we hold them under for however long I think it takes. Just kidding, we do not do that. Disclaimer, don't do that. But in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, or some of you who may have grown up in um, other churches uh, may have heard the Holy Ghost, which when I was thinking about that, it reminded me of this, um, the story of two boys who were um, practicing baptism. Two little boys are practicing baptism and the, the one uh, gets the other one, holds on to him and says, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and in the hole he goes. You know, and the, <laughs> we, we baptize to profess the truth of Christ and we, we baptize to walk in the way of Christ but also because we want to identify our life in Christ. Because what we know is that because of Jesus, not, not me, but because of Jesus' work in me, that the old me has been crucified with Christ. I, I've given my life over to Christ to walk in his way and to live by his truth. This is, this is my faith, my personal choice, choose to do this or we, might, we can also consider, too, that, you know what, my, my, if you're baptized as a child, that I was baptized and taught that this is the life that we live, and this is the life I've chosen to live. You've, you've learned that this is the life we live as followers of Jesus. Lives that say, I walk in his way, and I live by his truth. I have been crucified with Christ. And I no longer live, but Christ lives in me, Galatians 2.20. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. This is my new identity. It's Christ. Because of what he's done for me and my faith, I believe in him. I have received salvation through Jesus Christ. And because he is with me, this is who I am. 
My old temptations haven't left the building. But I know a clear sense that the strength of God is within me. That the wisdom of God is within me. That I have a hope that I didn't have before. Not because of me, but because of Christ in me. And the truth and the promises of the gospel. So Alexis comes up out of the water, right? You're going to be declaring to God and to all of us that your identity is in Christ. And my prayer is that truly this will be a day that you will, it'll be in your mind for the rest of your life. But it will just spur on a desire to want to stay closely connected to Christ. As we would say, draw near to the heart of Jesus every day. Because you know who he is and what he's done and who he is in you and the promises that you have in him. And we'll help you learn in all of that right through scripture. That's our job as a church, discipleship. So we're with you. Baptism is not saving you. Your faith in Jesus Christ is what saves you like the rest of us. But we could honestly say it's kind of like putting on a jersey right, with a number on it for your favorite team and saying, hey, I'm on the Jesus team. Kind of like that, right? It's like I said, I'm on the Jesus team. All right, that's enough of the corny jokes for today. So why do we do this thing that we call baptism? I think it's easy for us to just say, to walk in the way of Christ, to profess the truth of Christ, and to identify our life in Christ. It's all about Jesus, the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. I hope that little um, sticks with you, that, that connection to walk in the way, profess the truth, and to identify our life in him.